Hi, Gerard. How are you? Hi there, Mandy. Really nice to speak to you. I'm, yeah. I'm really enjoying dropping in for our virtual uh, early morning <laughs> cup of coffee. Well, I haven't been stuck in traffic to get to you, so that's quite nice. It makes a change. <laughs> yeah, that's and I, I suppose the fact that we are kind of meeting via Zoom is kind of reflective of all the changes that have happened to everybody in the last three weeks. Whereas normally we would meet, we would pass each other in Barefoot and Harborn or, yeah. you know, meet, meet for a coffee in the plough. Whereas I suppose now uh, we've had to change dramatically what, how we're working and socialising also. We have. So Gerald, did you want to explain to the mums and mums to be watching where you're based and what you do and how you've managed to change your physio? since this has all happened yeah so so we've got a really big group of uh, specialist pregnancy postnatal women's health physiotherapists and we're based over our our probably main base is in in harbour not barefoot yoga but then we also have a, a clinic a really busy clinic in at barefoot in king's heath just next to gorilla coffee off the high street mm -hmm. and we also do some great work in the mum's clinic in Solihull. So in obviously in the past, like everybody, the majority of the people we saw were face to face in the clinic. Yeah. Uh, but be because we've got a reputation for, for specialist pelvic health physiotherapy, we always had some patients who visited us from kind of different parts of the UK, occasionally from abroad. So with those patients, we always would have done some follow up online through yeah. kind of zoom through, through telehealth but now because we you know we closed the clinics really early and now kind of for all our existing patients and new patients we have the ability to do um, kind of online um, physiotherapy appointments and that's worked really well we've had some we've had some brilliant feedback from patients that they feel that they've you know they feel supported uh, they feel that we're accessible and that we can help them with uh, the problems that they are having. And it's it's so far we've we have it we have it a bit like yourself, Mandy. We have adapted. <laughs> yeah, yes, it's been a bit of a baptism of fire, but we've all adapted. That's true. So you're very much open for new patients as well. So people don't need to worry that if they haven't seen you before, they can't. No, and like I've I've done some clinics this week. Uh, Lisa, my colleague, did a big clinic yesterday. And we've we've had a real combination, uh, probably more new patients, I'd say, because I think patients are, uh, particularly some of the new mums are really kind of struggling to find help. Yeah. Uh, and it may be that yeah. the, you know, the, the, even though COVID nineteen is here, that doesn't mean that that all the other things have gone away, such as those kind of postnatal complications those complications during pregnancy. So I think people have been reassured that they can still make an appointment with a, with a, a pregnancy or postnatal physio specialist, but also they don't have to travel. No, and so it, they that can impacts the health plus. Yeah. And, and I think particularly with, the, with a new baby or an older baby or, or older children, uh, as long as they've got maybe someone at home, maybe their partner is, is home working, they can you know create a bit of space in the house and they can have that appointment because i'm you know i'm very much for mums because i always believe mums look after their babies but we're not very good at looking after ourselves and I, it does worry me a little bit that new mums will be thinking oh i'll just wait until this finishes and then i'll go and see a physio but the week that could be eight ten twelve weeks away what would you say about yeah. that I, th I think that's a really good point, Mandy, because I think you and I have seen a lot of new mums. You know, we, we have, you know, children ourselves. Uh, mothers tend to put themselves not even second, maybe third or fourth. Yeah. yeah. And, and a lot of people will put off having that self-care for themselves or that appointment. But this is not the time to do this because there is no certainty when this is going to change mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i think even the most optimistic person and i think both of us are optimists we yeah. know yeah. that this is not ending anytime soon no no so tell us some of your kind of main tips and pointers gerald and that people can be aware of and can do right now to help themselves with you know the, you know there are obviously very common issues that affect women during pregnancy and postnatally so I think that I think the first thing I'd like to say is that there is 
there is lots of information out there about how COVID-19 affects pregnancy and how it can affect people who are in that postnatal period. I think it's really important for women <clears throat> to look at <clears throat> good quality, trustworthy, reliable information. Yeah. And I think this is quite, quite, a, quite a timely uh, kind of meeting, Mandy, because yesterday the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists released some guidelines. And if people have real medical concerns about COVID-19 during pregnancy or postnatal or towards the baby, I would really recommend them going into Google, typing in Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists pregnancy advice for COVID-19. Mm -hmm. and, and that will give them really good quality advice. Because I think the internet is brilliant, but there's so much scaremongering out there. So I think that's the first thing. If you want that kind of quality advice, go there and obviously speak to your midwife health visitor yeah. gene. I think as well on the app that lots of pregnant women have now instead of the old note system, there's a section in there called something like leaflets. And I think in that section, it does link you to the up-to-date advice. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's just getting that way information from, you know, good quality yeah. sources like, like the, the NHS, the yeah. World College of Obs and Gunning. I think so. Some of the some of the top tips that that we have put together as a team are, and, and Mandy, we've spoken about this. So your normal parent and toddler groups are no longer running face to face, uh -huh. and and it this is hard. This is hard to accept, really, because this this may feel like it's taking some of the joy out of having a new baby or having an older baby, and also it's it's difficult to go out and meet those maybe existing um, friends with children or, or to meet new friends. I think it's really important, even if you're not, even if you don't really maybe want to, or, or you're maybe not that happy with doing this on the computer. I think it's really important to try and embrace engaging with some of those groups and meeting new mums and, and kind of continuing to meet your kind of baby and toddler friends online that's really important yeah you know, we would we normally yeah lots so we of normally are, wouldn't oh you go on money saying lots of mums are saying that they feel robbed of their maternity leave exactly and and i get i totally get that but you don't have to feel completely robbed because as you say gerard you can and actually because because everyone can do this from their own houses it's easier logistically to meet yeah. this way than it is to drag all your babies and other children out of the house and i think once you've done that once or twice it becomes quite normal so if i if i'd said to mandy uh six weeks ago oh mandy why don't we meet for a coffee over zoom mandy probably think this is a bit strange <laughs> yeah. whereas now it's whereas now it's quite normal yeah yeah i think it's also another real difficulty for 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 mums to accept is that you know their parents relatives friends can't visit mm -hmm. or they you know they can't bring the baby to see the grandparents yeah you know we're coming into eat we're almost at easter sunday uh that you know a lot of people on easter sunday will do a big easter egg hunt with with yeah. the kids with the toddlers that's not going to happen now in real life but i think it's also to really you know to try and maybe if those, if your parents maybe aren't that tech savvy to work it, well, how could we get them on FaceTime? Yeah. You know, could we get yeah. them on, on doing face-to-face -face on WhatsApp? Could we get them on Zoom? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we've managed and, and to And almost trying to embrace it. Yeah. I think that's really important for grandparents. Yeah, definitely. And it's, it's important for the, it's important for those, for those grandparents or aunts and uncles or, or you know, godparents or, or other family members and yeah. friends, because they, they will want to see you yeah. and they'll want to see the baby and they'll want to see the, the other, maybe if there are other children also. Yeah. We know that exercise is important and we are, and the importance of that exercise has become, become emphasized that we, you know, we are allowed to leave the house to exercise mm -hmm. and it's especially mm -hmm. important postnatally for both physical reasons, so for physical health, but also for mental health. Because, you know, having a baby, 
or other children who are who are off school or maybe the nurseries the nurseries are all closed so this is a this is a challenging time to have a baby it's really important to try and get out of that house or flat or where you live once a day and sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming to get out of the house I think it's also really important that if there is someone else at home with you, like a, a partner, that you try and get at least maybe a couple of times a week to get out of the house on your own. Yeah. To try good. and just get that bit of <laughs> bit of mindfulness, bit of headspace, bit of fresher, bit of time away from everything. And I think we I think mums don't tend to put themselves first, but I think this is a time where you think you know, even once or twice a week that, that you use one of those exercise sessions to exercise on your own. And that doesn't mean, you know, walking, walking or driving to Lidl or Aldi or Tesco and queuing for an hour. It means spending time prioritizing yourself. Yeah. So how soon would you say a postnatal mum from a physio point of view should be going out walking? So a mum who's just had a cesarean, when would you say she should start doing, you know, walking for half an hour? I think, I think that depends really on the recovery, Mandy. And, and I think sometimes that will depend on how that woman feels herself. So, but I think, I think that it is good not to rush that. Yeah. Cause I'm always worried that we do sometimes do too much too quickly. Exactly. And I think, I think post-section people will be slower to recovery, and especially in that, that kind of six-week period, everything is healing up. So it may be that they start doing some walking around the house or going up down stairs, or if, if you're lucky enough to have a garden, you do some walking in the garden and slowly build that up. So it's just about how you feel personally, how you, yeah. that, how you feel at that mum recovering. And, and really, this is a time where there is heightened anxiety. There is heightened levels of stress, People are not sleeping well anyways, not to mention having a, a new baby or older baby at home. So this is a time of heightened stress and anxiety. So this is not, I, I think we need to push all those uh, targets back a lot. So yeah. you know, if we feel well, you know, in the past we would think if someone's had an uncomplicated delivery things have gone well, we might find that they might be able to start running at 12 weeks. But I don't think now, I think now we need to move those targets back a bit because of all this added stress anxiety. But there's also a so lot- So to almost take that pressure off these women. Yeah, but also I think there's being, there's breath work isn't there and there's relaxation we can do to help with our sleep and to help with our recovery as well you know yeah take and that's and that's really, really important because say a condition such as a tummy gap or uh where there's an an increased uh, distance in the midline of that tummy or erectus diastasis that does need some exercise initially mm -hmm. but it also needs good nutrition yeah and that's difficult at the minute we're you know we're, we are finding that hard at the minute to have good nutrition it needs good sleep sleep is difficult anyways with with mm -hmm. with a newer older baby but it's harder now because because we have so many more things to worry about yeah it also needs a degree of trying to to lower those stress levels to to get some relaxation that helps yeah. tissue healing and, yeah. and that's where a lot of your stuff comes in mandy with the breathing the relaxation the mindfulness the headspace mm -hmm. and and getting out on your own although that's not not easy I think the other thing that we've noticed with a lot of the mums is that, so, you know, common conditions that we would see in clinic is maybe postnatal pelvic girdle pain. Yeah. Postnatal low back pain, uh, urinary leakage, maybe overactive bladder, frequency, having to go to the loo all the time, maybe pain on intimacy or uh, kind of genital pain, pelvic pain. But we know that even in normal times, heightened anxiety heightened stress uncertainty makes these things worse yeah so this is pre-covid 19 at the minute there is a real uh, those things are much more prevalent because of what's going on so i think it's just to say that 
your recovery may be slower or you may have days where things are not good but it's not clear why mm -hmm. but it's probably because of what's going on around us so it's almost to take pressure off these women say that you know things you will get better and, and we will help you get better but it may be that it'll take a little bit longer than normal or it may be that the pattern of recovery will be a bit more irregular you'll have good days and then maybe a day where you have more bladder frequency mm -hmm. or you have a bit more pelvic pain but that may not it's probably nothing you've done it's probably just because of what's going on around us and i think that also takes it almost knowing that takes a bit more pressure off of those mums yeah i think it's it's the whole thing isn't it that it's not a sprint you don't have to be recovered by next friday you just you have to recover properly and safely and be aware of how you're holding stress and strain within your body and be yeah. kind to yourself because if be you kind to yourself really be kind if you're tense and you're sitting hunched and you're sitting with your fingers clasped like this and your jaw tight it's going to affect your pelvic pain isn't it because you're holding yeah. that within within your body so it is being mindful relaxing not worrying about it. i think people i think a lot of people who've had pelvic pain in pregnancy we always hope it's going to completely disappear postnatally and it does and a lot of times pain. it does a lot of yeah. times it does but when it doesn't mums then worry that there's a reason that they've done something why it hasn't and it, it's not that they've done anything wrong it's just that's their current situation and it can be resolved but worrying about it isn't going to get you anywhere it's kind of just breathing and accepting that that's where you are now getting the help you can do at this point and then We've got, you know, as you say, this will end. There will be an after COVID-19 when we can start to have one-to-one -one interaction personally and get the help that way. Exactly. I think, I, th I think something that's very common postnatally, but that, that people don't really talk about is kind of bowel issues postnatally. I think particularly if you've had uh, maybe a traumatic birth, mm -hmm maybe a forceps delivery or maybe a grade three or four tear and and one of the common symptoms that that women eventually describe to you is that they get maybe loss of control of wind yeah or they get a little bit of maybe subtle kind of leakage mm -hmm. so that stops them normally going out yeah. Or it stops them, say, before COVID-19, it stops them going to the toddler groups. It stops them kind of doing your, well, not your class, because you're, you're very good at get, kind of getting people, getting people to just to be safe to disclose what's going on. But it maybe stops them exercising. And I think at the minute what, what people are saying is that, you know, they're maybe going to Aldi or Tesco's, but they're having to maybe queue there for an hour yeah. which because of you know social distancing and they're finding that difficult because they just don't have that confidence yeah because they're thinking well you know will i be okay you know will i will i break wind yeah. will i get some leakage or it may be that they're, they're they have some bladder frequency but they're thinking well i've got to stand outside aldi for an hour well i'm not sure i can do that because I, I might need to go to the loo twice so i think it's it's, it's also that although we're in a difficult time, that help is out there for those conditions, which really take a lot of the joy out of life. But there is, even now, you know, there is help available for those. And mum should never be embarrassed about that either, should, because it's much more common than we think. You're not going to be the yeah. only mum that this is affecting. Yeah, and it's really common. And, you know, not all, not all mums, but, you know, a lot of mums who've had maybe forceps delivery a traumatic birth those symptoms are very common yeah and you I can advise mums on what on ways to manage that themselves again virtually they don't have to see you to be able no. to do that you can still explain very clearly the ways that they can rehab and recover and i think the good thing is that although those are conditions that really affect someone's quality of life and um, mental health and uh, what they can do physically 
they're not that difficult to sort out. Okay, so that's really reassuring because I think mums think that they're going to have to, this, this is just how it is forever and that's not at all the case, is it? No, and it's a bit like the other conditions, like the urinary symptoms, the, the, the um, tummy gap, you know, postnatal low back pain. They're, they are really common, but they're, by, they're definitely not normal. Yeah. They're not normal. They should be looking at something that this is not normal for me to have this. I need to put myself first. Yeah. I need to look after myself and I need to get help with this. Yeah. So if you've got your, you know, your, you have a child at nine and seven and this is still an issue, you can still do something about it at that point. You don't have to be. Definitely. Anybody. Yeah. And I think I think a really good friend of mine, Marianne Ryan, who's a really esteemed uh, postnatal physio in in the states, she talks about once postnatal, always postnatal. Yeah, yeah. And that, and and you know, in the clinic, and Mandy, you will know probably people you've seen or friends of yours. You will know people who've maybe you know it may be that their kids are starting secondary school, mm. and then they think, well, actually, maybe now. I can pop myself first. Yeah. I would say don't wait that long. <laughs> We're yeah, exa- that. yeah, no, exa- yeah. I would say don't wait that <laughs> long. Yeah. So, yeah. But but <laughs> this but it's to highlight that, you know, you, we we see those women and they do really well and suddenly yeah. and they think, well, maybe I should have got this sorted yeah. a, a long time ago. Yeah. Brilliant. It's important to do pelvic floor exercise postnatally. Mm-hmm. And you know, we've got some really nice information on the website how to do the fast and slow ones. Yeah. Yeah. I think and a lot of people how, end up... how soon after postnatally should you do them because I know midwives kind of all the send you from hospital with do your pelvic floor exercises but for some people it's too sore to do them I think really yeah I think the same again it's a bit like we spoke before we need to kind of take some pressure yeah. off these I don't want mums coming home thinking oh my god I've got to do my pelvic floor exercises every day immediately when there's too much else to think about yeah so that it, they need to do it when things are comfortable when they feel ready so that maybe that may, for some people that may be a couple of weeks postnatally for some people that may be further out postnatally yeah but when people are starting to do normal things around the house they're walking going up and down stairs lifting the baby carrying the baby uh, going out for walks at that point they should probably be starting to do those pelvic floor exercises yeah. Yeah. for many reasons these are really difficult to do because there's so much else going on so at the moment, we are into the habit of doing a lot of hand washing. Yes, that's We true. hand wash a lot, but also we tend to hand wash standing up. Yeah. And we want to, we want women to do the pelvic floor exercises in standing because that's where they have to work. They don't have to work really when you're, you know, sitting or lying. We want women to do these exercises in very functional positions. So... What you could do is maybe when you're doing some of that hand washing at home, think, well, maybe I should do some of these pelvic floor exercises. Yeah, but you can do them seated as well. You can, yeah. And we and we do get people to do them in, 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 in a seated position also. Yeah. But it's really important that they're doing some in standing. Yeah. Standing where that pelvic floor has to work, has to work harder. Also, it's it's. Post C section, but a lot of people forget about. So we we talk a lot about well, the scar might take about six weeks to heal, and almost like almost like you pass through a magical doorway at six weeks. So you go from five weeks and six days, and then at six days, at six weeks and one day, you can suddenly do everything. So what's really useful when that scar has healed, and we talk about six weeks, is to do some gentle massage yourself around the scar. Yeah, I think that's maybe, really important. Lots of women, oil. yeah, lots of women don't feel comfortable touching their scar, do yeah. they? And you know, when we did the, when we saw those, the, those uh, kind of great women in your house, Mandy, when we did that clinic in your house, yeah. uh, we also saw that not only might the scar be quite sensitive, but the whole abdomen can be quite yeah. sensitive. Yeah, and people get you know this real fear of touching it mm. and and that may be for women who who maybe have had a, a vaginal delivery as well yeah and 
how that tends to manifest itself later on, maybe six months, nine months, a year, is those women get really co-contract that abdomen anytime any come so if their kids are running toward if the toddlers are running towards them or yeah. someone's give the, gonna give them a hug or their partner's gonna give them a hug uh they really tighten up and it becomes very sense that they have a real uh difficulty with having any touch to that area mm-hmm. so starting that kind of kind of self massage self-care is really important and is that with an oil or some could you use would you there are things you have to avoid when you like perfumed creams and things or yeah i think i think we i think we it's important especially for post c section it is it's good to use stuff that doesn't have any that's relatively kind of chemical free and sensitive so i think a lot of people will use um kind of rosehip oil is quite good yeah and it's it's also using something that, that you're happy applying yourself but using stuff that's perfume is not good that's got loads of chemicals hmm. it's, it's people getting putting maybe a bit more thought into what into what they put in the body it's a bit like you know lots of people spend lots of money and put loads of thought on what they put on their face <laughs> yes whereas people need to probably put a little bit more thought on what they do in other parts of their body yeah yeah, and that's a nice gift. You could, you know, you could ask someone if they want to buy you gifts after the baby's come to buy you, you know, just a natural oil like rosehip oil would be lovely, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, and something that's that's, you know, without getting being too expensive, maybe something that's that's organic and relatively yeah. kind of chemical free. Yeah, prolapse is also common, and but this is this is probably very mild prolapse where there's a little bit of movement in those pelvic organs. So when someone's doing something a bit more strenuous, they f- might feel a little bit of pressure into the vagina. They may feel a bit of um, kind of dragging there. Mm-hmm. And, and sometimes this can be associated with moms just trying to push themselves to do too much. Mm-hmm. You know, someone's maybe had a forceps delivery, but they're thinking, well, you know, I need to do the garden because it's Easter, the weather is good, or I need to decorate these four rooms or, Don't. you know, my partner's home working. So now is a perfect time to decorate the house, but they just need to stop and yeah. say, yeah. this can wait. My body needs to heal a little yeah. bit. There's often described as it. And I remember having that heaviness feeling. Heaviness, heaviness and dry feeling. Yeah. So they they so they they are not you know they are not good symptoms to have and they're also kind of the the body's kind of traffic light systems yeah. you know putting on those amber red lights to just step back a bit you know a lot of people online at the minute are starting to grow vegetables brilliant you know we we suddenly have time to do that in the garden well I don't because I've got my, I've got three boys I've got astroturf <laughs> but a lot of people are doing that but. Now, if you've had a if you've had a just had a baby, it, it's probably not the time to be doing that really heavy physical yeah. work outside. No, it's the time to watch someone else do it. Watch, exactly. Watch exactly. Do it. And, I, and, and I think finally, you know, the nurseries are closed. Yeah. Except in some circumstances for the key the nurseries are closed. The play groups are closed. It's difficult to, you can't have family to your house. Yeah. And you, so this is a, and you also may be homeschooling other children. It's a very stressful time. This is a very, this is a very stress, this is a very stressful time. So I think kind of echoing what Mandy always says is that it's trying and it's not easy. You know, we have been there ourselves to try and create time for yourself. Yeah. Even if that's that having a bath or a shower, putting on some TV for yourself, sleeping when the other kids are asleep, when the baby's asleep, uh, getting the older kids to do more. You know, they're at, if you have older kids, they're at home, they, can, they, 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 they have the ability to do more. Yeah. And also trying to find some time for some self-care. And, and not feeling guilty about prioritizing yourself guilty. because you need to, because you, you are so, Im- I think mums forget how important they are within the family. And if they become exhausted, if you as a mum become exhausted, 
then you're not helping anybody. So yeah. self-care really has to become has to become higher up the list than it is for most of us. Yeah, really and especially at the moment, especially yeah. at the moment, that's really important. So we are we are we are available. We if if you go to our website, it's harbournphysio.co.uk. So we. Uh, we probably normally look after women in the West Midlands, but now we have the ability to look after women kind of anywhere, really. Uh, and then we, and then once COVID nineteen settles down, we can always link you up with someone more local because we run lots of training for pelvic health physios, so we have a big network in the UK. And I would just like to say a really big thank you to Mandy. I've enjoyed our virtual coffee. Thank you for my. I've got my big teacup. <laughs> yes, that, that that is that that just look, or maybe that's just far away. It just looks. <laughs> it is big. big. <laughs> So I'd like to say a really big thank you to Mandy and Mandy, I will look forward to catching up again on Zoom and eventually meeting in person. Yes, that would be very nice. And thank you very much, Gerald. That was really, really helpful. I think really reassuring for mums to know that help is still available. And if they are struggling with anything, then they're not the only one. And you've seen all kinds of different exactly. issues. And, you know, don't be embarrassed about coming to see you about something that is bothering you as a new mum, because it's really, really important that you get the right. Yeah. And we've got, we've got, we have some brilliant, we had some brilliant people in the clinics and now we've got those same brilliant team virtually. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Gerard. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. 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 Bye.